you for coming. I see a lot of uh, familiar faces here. I'm, and I think many of you came from the Sony event. So today has been a very busy day for all of you. Huh? Yeah? Okay. So today I'm switching gears a bit. I'm not going to be talking about cameras. I'm going to be talking about uh, flash system and mainly about uh, Godox. Huh? So uh, I want to make this a very practical session. So I'm not going to you know, make you go through like uh, one hour of presentation and then you, you, know, you, you don't get to do some hands-on. Huh? So hopefully you can do some hands-on. Um, now today's event has been organized by uh, YL Camera. Yeah, so they have actually uh, presented uh, all their equipment and they have very special exclusive offers for today. I think specifically for their uh, V1 uh, round head flash. Eh? So you, I, 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 he, uh, this is Marcus here. He reassured me that uh, the prices that you're going to get today is going to be the lowest you can get anywhere. Yeah? Yeah? And then the other thing about like uh, Godox equipment, there's a lot of Godox equipment out in the market. Uh, YL Camera is actually one of the authorized resellers. Eh? That means you buy Godox equipment here, you get a one-year warranty, correct? One-year warranty. And even if it falls beyond the warranty period, eh, they actually have a service center here. So, you know, like with flash systems, if you ever use a strobe before, eventually it will break down. You need to change the bulb, you need to change you know, like, uh, you know, some of the parts, you need to get batteries, you need to get the mount repaired and things like that. So it's very important that if you're investing this for the long term, uh, you have it for something that uh, will last you a long time. Eh? So I'm just going to go through some uh, presentations first. I've got some presentations. I've also got my camera hooked up to the, uh, for live, as you can see. Eh? So, and, um, so the two pieces of equipment that I'm going to talk of, V1 round head flash. Eh? So big question is why round head? What's the big deal? How is it different from the, you know, like the conventional flash? Uh, it costs slightly more, but why would you invest in this rather than getting a uh, conventional flash? Eh? So you have any questions, please uh, ask me. Yeah, and, uh, and one more thing I want to remind you, eh? you have to listen very carefully because we actually have a pop quiz at the end of this. Eh? So I've got three, uh, three gifts. Uh, to give out today, yeah. Once a uh, lens lens pen sensor cleaner, quite useful if you want to like clean your own sensors. Eh? One is a uh, Joby. Uh, it's one of these magnetic uh, things that you can attach. Eh? So proper Joby, yeah. Not 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 China Joby, yeah. And uh, one is a Gary strap. Eh? So the um, and everything that I'm going to cover is going to be in my presentation. So you have to you know. A bit of incentive to sort of like uh, not get so distracted by the model, but actually part of my presentation. Yeah, uh, V1 Flash, of course, I'll be talking about the trigger. So the trigger I'm going to be covering will be the X2T trigger. This test came out and then I'm going to tell you why, uh, the, what, what are the benefits with this new trigger. The other uh, stroke I'm going to talk about is uh, AD400. Uh, and the reason I like to talk about AD400 is, is one of the first strokes, Godox strokes that I bought. Yeah? And it's still one of the most uh, useful strobes that I have. I have an AD400, I have an AD600. I use it for my commercial work and I find that it's changed my workflow completely. Yeah? So that's a bit about myself. I'm a uh, Wei Tat. I'm from KL Photographer. I'm actually a full-time photographer. I cover mainly events. I do a lot of like corporate profile photos and I do food photography as well as, uh, as my uh, profession. So I'm sharing my experience with you on this equipment based on my work as well as my personal interest in, in using this equipment. Eh? So like all of you, I took up photography uh, professionally six years ago. So six years ago, imagine, you know, like, uh, you know, we started with a Nikon system, we bought a speed light, you know, uh, it's, it's, uh, and, you know, we've invested in a lot of equipment, you know, in, in that time and now this, over time, I sort of know what I need better and a bit more uh, selective with the equipment that I buy. So this is just an example of some of the commercial work that we do. Eh? Now this one here is a simple setup, a Godox uh, AD400 strobe right and left, you know, with, uh, with a P120 softbox. Eh? So you see the, the light is very, you know, you don't have harsh shadows on anybody. The light is quite soft, you know, everybody's well lit, yeah? 
and then the, you know, the, the, and I'm able to shoot at the very low ISOs, high, ISO 100, and I can shoot this, shoot this at about you know, F, F uh, 5.6, F8. Yeah? So I get very good detail, very you know, like good depth of field. Um, occasionally, we do like I, I do take my lights out uh, for shoots to sort of like um, you know something a bit interesting, uh, not non-commercial, but we have a bit of fun. Yeah, this was the river of life, and we had the model there. We set up one uh, P120, which is very big light. Uh, so, uh, and we set up a trigger. So, if you look at the result of what we shot for that day, uh, that that was the result. Uh. So this was shot, you know, like a uh, aperture almost wide open, f2.8 with the 7200. Uh, we balance the ambient light and then we shoot the model with uh, TTL lighting. So you get, this, this monitor is not great because it's, you know, you, you don't see the graduation here. It looks quite rough. Uh. But actually on the, on the computer screen, you, you get, you know, you get very good tonality across where the shadow areas are supposed to be. Yeah. Um, now this is a shot that we took recently at uh, for fun. Go, go ahead. Yeah. Sure. Um, inside the flash, is it very important to have that big sound box? Yeah. That's the most important part, actually. You know. I mean, use the soft. I mean, the basically like uh, lighting is the bigger the light source, the softer uh, the result is going to be. So, I mean, if you had more money and have more time, you know, like. If I had a big sun dish up there, it's going to look beautiful. Eh? Yeah. So the rule is this, you know, like, like to carry like a P120 outdoors, you know, is already not an easy thing to manage. Yeah? Because wind and people and all that. Eh? But you can see you get very good results on a single person. Eh? If you get a bigger group, then eh, the light source is still not going to be big enough. Eh? So the, the general rule is like, the, the bigger the softbox, the softer the light, the better the quality of light. So we always try and use a big softbox when we can and when it's practical. So if you're going out on your own lake gardens, you know, you're shooting by yourself, you're not going to carry a P190 around. You know, you probably just carry something like that, put on a small light stand and, and just have a like, small light box or a, or a reflector on the, on the umbrella, right? right? If you have a crew, four or five people, then you, know, you bring a big soft box, you can get people to send back your thing. You know? So to answer the question, in any situation, the bigger the light source, the softer the light, the better quality the light, the, the, the better the result is going to be. Yeah? Now this one, uh, I want to highlight here is we actually shot 7200. Uh, notice the speed, uh, 1800. Uh. So the reason I'm able to do that, I'm using high-speed sync. Uh. So one thing is high-speed sync, with, uh, in the past, you have to buy very expensive equipment before you can do high-speed sync. You know? Even a Nikon speed light, you, know, like, uh, you, you can do high-speed sync, but you're only limited to that much power. Huh? Yeah? I've got AD400 there, you know, like it's a 400 watt uh, bulb, and I can, I can still get effectively shoot this you know, at uh, broad daylight. Huh? At the back was like broad daylight, and look, I managed to get the background about uh, one stop below my subject. Huh? And you get quite nice dramatic look, you know, like it's because it's a bigger group, the light is not super soft, but then lighting on everybody is good, yeah. I don't get any shadows, I don't get any blind spots, yeah. And uh, you know, if uh, the detail is very good because the quality of light is very, you know, uh, uh, very consistent. Yeah? So, just to show you the setup for this shot, you know, it's very simple, you know. This is a P190, you know, like uh, I'm, we had the sun. Coming from the back, you can see Kishan's hair here, you know, the sun is like, you know, super bright on the back of her hair. Which is, which is good because then, you know, naturally, yeah, if whenever we shoot like a portrait like that, we like to get shoots like that because, you know, by default you get rim lighting, yeah? right? So whenever, you know, if you go to lake gardens or whatever, you know, there's this part where there's a fence. Uh, wedding good photographer always go there because, the, you know, that fence just in front of the lake club, you know. The sun comes down and it shines right down, you know, uh, from, from along, the, along the fence. Eh? And if you set someone there with a the light, you get beautiful rim lighting. You get that, you know, golden light coming through. And then you, you have the flash, you get a very nice, soft, uh, you know, portraiture image. Eh? So that's a, um, the setup shot for that. Eh? So I just show you another shot uh, that we took. Eh? 
again, you look at, you notice that what we are shooting at, they're shooting at, uh, this is not a high-speed sync, regular, because I'm actually uh, shooting in a shaded area, but the background is, is uh, outdoor. Yeah. So my challenge is trying to balance the ambient light at the back with my flash. Yeah. So with, um, and I always shoot TTL, I never shoot manual. Eh? The reason is I, uh, I do that is I, 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 I trust the TTL. Eh? I'm used to the TTL system and basically with the TTL system, I don't have to sort of like uh, use the light meter, figure out my exposure, move it at one, two stops. I take my first shot, I'm roughly yeah, uh, within range already. I'm roughly you know, between uh, or half a stop of where I need to be. Yeah? So in this case here, you see uh, how I normally take this shot is I just take this shot without the person first eh? and make sure I get this exposure. And when I take, get this exposure, I usually try to get it slightly below, like half a stop or one stop lower so that the person will pop eh? when you take the photo. Eh? So you look at this, the background is uh, the correct exposure, right? But I, I've sort of like exposed the person slightly brighter. Eh? So when you look at a portrait like that, wow, you know, the person pops. Eh? So if you look at setup for this shot, again, um, simple setup, uh, P90 with a, you know, with a, that's the bright background I was like uh, getting my exposure for, yeah, and that's the subject, yeah. yeah. And so this is right in front of my apartment. Um, so in terms of like uh, fun with studio lights, you don't need a studio, yeah. Anywhere where you can set up lighting, you know, you can, you know, play around with studio lights. I'm going to show you some more examples of some of the lighting that we did. And any questions on this? When you're in TTL, yes. when you're in manual, you can do a lower exposure of the background. Yes. Then the light can start up. So yeah. The yes, yes. But when you're on TTL, you will automatically look out for the correct exposure. Actually, when, when you're shooting a scene like this, sir. Uh, When you set your camera, your ISO, your aperture, and your, your ISO, your aperture, and the shutter speed determines your ambient exposure, right? Shutter speed has no effect on the flash power, on the flash exposure. So if I'm shooting at a one, if I'm shooting at 160th, 1, 100, 200, the flash you know, the flash uh, exposure doesn't change because the flash, you know, doesn't depend on your shutter speed. Yeah? So usually what we do is we always expose for the background first and then I turn my light on yeah? and then next thing I adjust my flash. Yeah? If you're doing manual, then you go 1.8, you go 1.16, 1.8, 1.4 and then you adjust accordingly. Yeah? If I'm using TTL, I just go TTL, I get roughly the same exposure and either plus, uh, plus one third up or minus one third down. Yeah? depending on skin tone, eh? yeah? If you're shooting uh, someone with very light skin tone SK2 model, then you know, you might have to bring the exposure down, yeah? If you're, bringing, if you're shooting someone with a sort of more dark, darker skin tone, you might want to bring it up just to sort of like, uh, you know, uh, sort of compensate for the skin tone, eh? So TTL is very good at that, eh? So I will shoot this thing at TTL. So I set it up, I get the back exposure, I set it TTL, my first shot usually is already like that, eh? I, I don't really have to uh, mess around with uh, with uh, um, my expo my, with my uh, manual flash exposure. Okay, so I show you another photo. Uh. Um, this photo, I, I actually won the Sundayan Photo Competition second prize. Uh, this was a development. Uh, we, I just got the AD four hundred at the time. I thought this would be a good opportunity for me to try the lights out. Yeah. So the good thing is we just set up two lights, right and left, yeah? And you know, the Angpao paper, because it's, it's caught by the light, you know, it, 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 you know, it, it shows up against the dark background. Yeah? So again, uh, you know, like uh, there are many creative ways that you can use your lights. Uh. In this case, I use the lights to, you know, to, to actually, you know, participate in the competition. Yeah? So in, in this situation, most people would just go there and shoot with the handphone because it's a developer's uh, uh, site. Yeah? And uh, I think if we just do a bit of homework, uh, you know, we can just set up shots. Uh, 
I mean, the, the way I set this up is I, I just worked with another photographer, got a few of my friends, decided, you know, to go to Seremban, have breakfast and, and take this shot. Eh? So the, the bonus is we actually, you know, won the second prize in this. So that's, you know, so again, uh, just to highlight to you, the lights are, these lights are not, not just, I mean, they're they quite useful. Eh? You know, once you have lights, you, it sort of expands your ability or horizons of what you can do. So now um, I'm just going to go into a bit of equipment. Eh? Now the, I have this, I have this. Uh, I prefer this because it's got the hot shoe. Eh? It's very handy to have the hot shoe there. Yeah? Um, compare this to the older X1T. The older X1T was very difficult to use because they did not have these buttons. Eh? And because they did not have these buttons, you, you was, I'm spending my time scrolling up and down, up and down, trying to find my grouping. Eh? Whereas this one, I press A, I'm, I'm on A, B, I'm on B, C, I'm on C. If, just to explain with you how this um, Godox, I mean, how most slash systems work. Eh? First, you set a channel. I think there's like 36 channels that you can set. Eh? And within each channel, you can set five groups, eh? A, B, C, D, E. Eh? So, which is more than enough. Eh? So, if you have got two photographers, they are using strobes, eh? usually you make sure that you're not clashing with channels. Someone might be using channel 21, you just set yours to channel 15 or something like that, so you never clash. Eh? And then we set up our groups. Eh? Uh, usually you set up groups like um, A, my light, A, B, back light, rain light, C or something like that. Eh? So that's a very typical setup. Eh? Uh, if you've got two light sources, it's A and B. Eh? So it's very easy. Eh? And the good thing about this uh, strobes is um, you can, you can uh, mix and match. Eh? You, you can set up like uh, AD400 together with, uh, with uh, a V1 flash. Eh? So in this case, I'll, I'll set this up with a light box as the main light, and I set this up as a rim light at the back with the grid. Eh? Yeah? Oh, the other thing about this, uh, good thing about this, uh, this triggers is, this can trigger any type of, um, when you buy this, you have to say, you have to define what kind of amount it is. Uh, Nikon, Canon, Sony, Fuji, right? But if you get a trigger, a trigger can trigger any of those brands. Uh. So imagine if you have like, some people I know have like three systems here. Uh. They have a Fuji system because they like the JPEG rendition. They have a Canon system because they like the skin tone. And they have a Nikon system because they like to, you know, they like to use it because it's, uh, you know, very competent for events. Eh? So they have three different flashes. Eh? But if you get one trigger, you can trigger all those three different flashes eh, together. Eh? So you don't have to, you don't have to match your trigger to your flash. One trigger, you know, can, can trigger all your different flashes. Eh? Okay. So uh, this is where you have to pay a bit of attention. Huh? Hint, hint. Huh? Okay. Okay. Completely wireless, interlinear triggered. So it's unlike some of the older systems, you know. Like if you, if you use the Speedlight Commander system, the old ones, you have to be line of sight eh? because they use infrared, eh? right? This one is completely wireless. Eh? So it's, uh, you don't need to be line of sight. You can be behind this wall. You can still tri trigger. Um, the Godox AD400 that has a high voltage uh, battery. It's good for full 360 full shots. The AD, AD, AD400. Eh? That means fully charged, you can, at full power, you can get 360 shots. Eh? Usually, if I'm shooting like a uh, small graduation event, eh, I might take about 500 shots that day. Eh? And I'm not taking that at full power. So, one battery, I can actually last the whole event. Eh? In the past, I had to go and, you know, find the plug point, pull cables and all that is very messy. Now I go there, I set it up, I'm done. Yeah? Full TTR functionality. This thing is very useful. Eh? TCM. Eh? Uh, TCM, it doesn't stand for uh, traditional Chinese medicine, okay? It's a, it's a TTR convert to manual. So for those who, you who like to shoot manual, eh, this is very useful because what you do is you set it for TTL, you take one shot, 
and the system calculates the exposure based on TTL. Then you press the TCM button. Uh, immediately after you press the TCM button, it sets the whole, it sets the settings in manual. Eh? So maybe you know you set the TCM manual immediately, it, it tells you that the power is one eighth. Eh? And you know that's already your base exposure. You can either go up or you go down manually. Yeah? So, so if you're doing a very long shoot and you don't want the exposure to keep changing every one, eh? you can just set it to TTL, take one shot, then come back, press TCM, and then it locks in the, the exposure as a manual exposure. Yeah? So TCM, very, very useful. Eh? High speed sync. Um, um, do you understand now uh, how, how much, like how many of you actually know what the sync speed of your camera is? What's the sync speed of your camera? 250. Different cameras have different sync speed. Uh, what's your sync speed on your camera? Huh? 250, yeah? Anybody else? So traditionally, yeah, for... This sync speed is a big, big thing before all this high speed sync is, yeah? Because if you're using a film camera, you know that your sync speed, some of the sync speed is at 100, some of the sync speed is 200, some of the sync speed at 250, yeah? yeah? If you're using a Hasselblad, yeah, because it's got a lift shutter, yeah, they used to boast, you know, their sync speed is 1 over 500, yeah? right? So, so basically, yeah, the, the sync speed is actually, if you know how like cameras work, what happens is like the shutter opens, and then it closes, right? So usually it opens, chick, chuck, chick, chuck. That's how the shutter works. Eh? But once the shutter goes up really fast, eh, you find that if it goes up to a thousand, it opens, and before it opens, the back shutter keeps following. Eh? So the shutter does that. Eh? So at lower speeds, the shutter goes chick, chuck. So when you check the flash flashes, you get a full image on the screen, chuck, you know, you get the exposure. If it's the sync, if you go beyond the sync speed, one over five hundred, you go check, and before it goes chuck, the top shirt curtain is coming down. Eh? So if your flash goes off when it's coming off, eh, you're just going to get a band of light. Have you have you experienced it before? If you have a most shutters are up and down now. If you got those shutters, the older cameras they go like that, right? You know, you got a you got a shutter that goes sideways. You get one strip of light, eh? and that's because of your sync speed. Eh? So how does high-speed sync work? High-speed sync would actually synchronize such that it could check and it flash multiple times. Yeah? It keeps flashing while it's like going down and at the end it closes. Yeah? So you get the full exposure across your whole frame. Yeah? So the good thing is you can go beyond your, speeds, um, your, shut, your, your shutter sync speed. You can go 500, you can go 1 over 1000, you can go 1 over 2000. What's the bad? What's the bad thing? What's the, you know, what, what, you know, what's the downside? Anybody? Okay, that, that's uh, partly right. The you lose a lot of light. The effectiveness of your flash, uh, If you if you shoot at the uh, below sync speed, you might get full power. If you shoot at maybe double sync speed, you lose about you lose about 70% of the power, right? So you have to balance that. If you've got a choice, then you try and keep below your, your sync speed eh, so that you have the maximum power of the flash. You have no choice, then you have to do it that way. Yeah? So that's why, you know, like, and in what situations do we use high-speed sync? Any ideas? Why would you use high-speed sync? Freeze motion. Hmm? Freeze motion. Freeze motion. Uh, no points. <laughs> okay. The reason uh, most photographers and usually wedding photographers love high speed sync. You know why? I can shoot wide open. I shoot. I can shoot at one. You know, if I'm shooting at aperture, if outdoors, uh, if I set my aperture to five point six. You know, typically your, your shutter speed is roughly around 1 over 200, 1 over 250, yeah? No problem, right? F8, you're shooting at, you know, like uh, F8, you know, you're shooting ISO 100, you're probably, you know, like if you, you, you know, suddenly 16 rule, yeah? You know, what, what, what speed are you shooting at? You're shooting at about uh, 125, 200, yeah? 
So you're below sync speed. Eh? But if I push my aperture up to 1.4, what happens? My shutter goes up. My shutter goes up to 1 2,000th of a second. Eh? If I need to go to 1 2,000th of a second, what happens? You know? My flash I cannot use. That's why you need high speed sync. Eh? So if you go back to the photo that we used earlier, I'm able to shoot this at 1 800 wide open on my 70 200 eh? because I've got high speed sync. Eh? So any flash you buy today, you should have high speed sync. It's a very useful feature. Eh? And last time, high speed sync used to be very complicated to you. You have to set the camera, you have to set your flash, you know, you have to work out your power and all that. Nowadays, it's just one button. You press high speed sync, there's one button in here. Uh, with the thunder and the, and the H, and you press that button, high speed sync. That's all you do, you know? And the only thing yeah, that you have to sort of like take into consideration is you have to make sure that you uh, put the flash closer that you, so that you have enough light, nah? yeah? And once you balance that, it's like, using, it's like using any other flash system. You don't have to worry about it. You only adjust the, you need to adjust the camera. Okay, you, there's one button here. And then on the trigger, uh, trigger usually has a, a function called sync, S Y N C. Yeah? So on the uh, on the X2T, you go into menu, you scroll, and there's something called like sync, and the sync has got two settings: it's either off or high speed. That's all you need to do. And once that's on, it works on that. It works on the V1. It works on all the range of like uh, Godox flashes. Yeah? yeah. So if you're so if you get a Godox system and you've never tried high speed sync, that's one of the most exciting features about this flash. Yeah? Um, compact. Sorry. Yes. Your, you try to take a photo and then you keep moving your shutter speed and then your shutter speed stuck at 1 2 50. So you know, you know. Then you try to take a photo, it's going to be overexposed. Eh? Yeah, so, it's, it, and once you, so that's very obvious. Eh? You will know like, when high speed sync is not working. I think it does, yes. Yes, it does. Now, color stable mode, why this, this is a big deal? Eh? There's actually a button here that's called color stable mode. Eh? And uh, most people complain about cheap flashes is like the color is not consistent. The first shot looks warm, second shot looks a bit cooler, third shot, then the color. So your skin tone now, the color keeps changing. Eh? So in traditionally an expensive light, it means that it's very color stable. Eh? If you buy, you buy a 30,000, 20,000 brown color, you expect the color to be super consistent from, from, from one shot to the hundred shot. Yeah? Yeah? If Pro Photo system also, you expect the same thing. You know? Three years ago, you cannot see any of those. You cannot make any guarantee consistencies about any of the uh, Chinese lighting. Yeah? Today, if you look at this, uh, this Godox has two range of uh, strobes. Yeah? You find they have the uh, AD400, they have the AD400 Pro. Eh? So what's the difference with the Pro? You look at the price difference, eh? it's quite a big difference in price. Eh? And you, you ask, you know, what's the difference? They, they are both strobes. Eh? The big difference is this one. This is one of the biggest differences. Eh? If you're doing commercial work, this is what we look for. Yeah? If you're shooting food, this is what we look for. Yeah? It's color stable. Eh? So, don't take my word for it. These are results with brown color, Profoto, and Godox. Eh? And basically, they, they just test different outputs across, uh, across different power ratings. And then, you know, the, they find that the color variance is plus minus 75 Kelvins. Eh? So that's very narrow. That's comparable with any of these other systems. Eh? So with the pro systems, that's what you're paying for. But there's a downside when you turn on the color stable mode. Eh? The, it it's, it's, um, recycles a bit slower, yeah? So that's one thing to keep in mind. Eh? But in general, uh, if you're doing, if you, like when you buy a strobe system, why would I buy a 
What's the difference? Why would I buy an AD600 Pro versus an AD400 Pro? It depends on what you're shooting, yeah? If you're shooting really fast, pop, 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 people come in, you know, like big groups and all that. If you're shooting like con con convocations, I need the fastest flash I can get, you know, because time is money, yeah? If I have to wait there half a second for, 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 for a refresh, yeah? that's money, yeah? If I take two shots and then the first, first shot is the right second shot, I don't have lighting, that's money, yeah? So that's the consideration. If you're doing hobby work and you're, doing, you're taking some portraiture and you're shooting like single portraiture, then you know AD400 is more than enough because it's a lot more power than you would get from a single stroke. Eh? So why round head flash? Eh? Now, I have to explain to you, like, apart from the uh, exterior round eh, and the reflector, there's actually a difference in the way that they build the uh, flash head inside. Yeah? The flash head inside is actually central. It flashes, it goes through the reflector, and then it comes out. Yeah? With a conventional flash, you get, uh, you know, the lighting is actually a, a, a sort of like a tube. Yeah? And when it flashes, yeah, you, you, if you try to take it and flash your, your, your flash against the wall and just take a shot, you find that you get lines. Yeah? yeah? It's not obvious when you use it now, but you, you get lines. Eh? So what this does is you get very even, consistent lighting. Eh? And the lighting is, if you get square, you get up there, you're going to get a square, right? If you get round, you get up there, you're going to get a nice round sort of like a, uh, um, uh, you know, like flash image. Eh? So i just show you some results. Eh? I've actually tested this myself, and it's consistent with what I see. Eh? Like, you see, you get very round, even light. Eh? Whereas this one, you get more elongated. And if you, closely at, if you look closely at it, within the light itself, you can actually see the, you can actually see the, see the filaments. Eh? Yeah? So, how does this translate to use? Sometimes when we go outdoors, we just want to shoot off-camera flash. Yeah? You get hard light, no doubt, but then, if you're shooting against sun, it's better than no light. You know? If I have a big crew, I bring a softbox. If I don't have a big crew, then you know, I just do, do use an off-camera flash here. And if I use an off-camera flash on the face here, you see the lighting is actually uh, very acceptable. Yeah? It is hard, you get hard light, but then the light, the, the evenness on the, on, on, the, on, the, on the skin tone and all that is very good. I'll show you some examples that I took today. So as I was saying, high speed sync, first thing I do is just catch the background exposure. I know this guy is going to be in the dark because the light is coming from the back. It's very bright, you know. We're shooting this in the shade. Yeah? So I don't worry about the exposure on this person. I just make sure I got exposure on the back. Yeah? So I want, like this one here, I want to shoot at f2.8, right? So I shoot at f2.8 so I get the nice bouquet at the back. Once I do f2.8, I'm shooting at ISO 100 because that's the lowest my, my camera will go. And then next thing I do is I adjust my shutter speed. Yeah? So I adjust my shutter speed, you know, like 1, 1,000, 1, 1, 2,000, 1, 3,000, you know, I just set my, adjust, my shutter speed. Yeah. And next thing is, I put on my uh, uh, V1 off camera, just hold it like that, set it to TTL, and boom, right? <laughs> so you look at this, yeah? Immediately, yeah, I've got, I mean, it's slightly brighter than what you would, what you would want uh, if I was uh, to adjust it. I'll probably bring it down slightly. But, you know, like, I take this shot, I take the second shot already. I've got, like, roughly where I need to be, yeah? yeah? And this is, uh, look at the shutter speed I'm shooting at, yeah? One, three, uh, 3,000 of a second, 50mm 1.4, wide open, yeah? uh, ISO 100, shooting at TTL, high-speed sync. Yeah? So normal flash, you won't be able to do this that easily. Yeah? I'll make this uh, available later as well. Eh? I'll make this presentation available. So like, if, if you need to take any photos or anything later, yeah? So again, this uh, direct flash. Yeah? Of course, you get the shadows and all that. Yeah? But look at that. Yeah? 50mm 1.4, I'm holding one hand, right, you know, 
and I'm, I'm holding my like right hand, left hand, I'm shooting like that. And, and look at that. Eh? Look at how, uh, you know, like how, how, how clean eh, the light is. Eh? Right? And the good thing about this, if I'm shooting with this light, eh, I get modeling light. Eh? So can you come in? Sorry. Yeah. So, it's all right. So, so if I'm taking a photo, eh, like you, sometimes you're just guessing, right? Look at that. I got modeling light. I can, I can roughly see where the lighting is, eh? right? And then I take my shot. Eh? So this modeling light goes from 1 to 10. Eh? Look at that. Usually, yeah, we hold that light, we hold like that. Yeah? You're not getting the person's face, eh? right? Roughly, we don't know where getting first, but roughly, you look at that. Yeah, I'm getting a first space. Yeah, if I'm doing a rim light, if you turn around, eh? sorry. Okay, if I'm doing a rim light, you see, yeah. Usually, people hold a rim light like that, right? Just hold that. You don't know it's hitting shoulder or what. You look at that. I know where my rim light is going. Yeah. So this is very useful. The this is the modeling light. Eh? And you got nice round modeling light. You're getting very good. Uh, you know, uh, good. you know, you have good accuracy with light. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So, a bit of features about this uh, light. Firstly, the TCM button, you can find it actually on the flash. Yeah? Yeah? Uh, your traditional Chinese medicine button uh, does magic. Yeah? <laughs> Secondly, then I want to tell you about these uh, lights are uh, the um, AKR1. Sounds like something out of Star Wars. Yeah? Um, magnetic accessory kit. Uh. And I find this very useful. I'm going to show you some examples of how we use this. Now, uh, this kit is complementary to this because it comes with a magnetic uh, magnetic adapters uh, that goes right on the right, right, right on the thing. It's magnetic and it's it's quite uh, quite strong. Uh. And the good thing about this is like I can. I can use multiple accessories together. Like I've got a uh, diffuser here. On top of that, I put another like dome diffuser. You know, yeah, and it works well. Eh? I can, I can put a grid. Yeah. So the most useful things I find is this is the grid. This is very good for highlight. You don't want the light to go all over the back and the shoulders and the side of the face. Eh? So I just wanted the hair, so this is very useful. Um, this is very good for events. Just pop it up, point it up there, you know, you always get light on the face, yeah? you always get a bit of ambient, you know, spill light. Yeah? Yeah? Um, Cause it gels, yeah? So you want to like uh, warm up your scene, you want to like uh, compensate for fluorescent light, you know, you, you can use the gels. You can use the gels together with your other accessories. So that's very handy. Um, you got a set of bundles. So this is very good if you want to, you're taking food, eh? you got a plate of food and you just have a prawn there that you don't highlight. You can actually taper this down so that you just point on that light of food. Eh? And you know, because you got the modeling light, you can see where the light is going. Yeah? Um, if you're an event photographer, This is what I use the most. Flash card. This is by far the most useful, yeah, use, useful tool I have. Eh? Uh, and I'll, I'll show you with the, when the live model arrives, eh? uh, that uh, how we use this. Eh? So just to recap, in this uh, AKR1. We have a grid, yeah, grid. Huh? We have gels, different gels. You got warm gels, you got uh, cool gels, you know. I've got a uh, reflector. I've got a band door. I've got a diffuser dome. And I've got a snood, huh? yeah. So, 
So basically, if you're getting this, I would strongly um, encourage you to get the uh, AKR one because it, it, it really like uh, adds a lot of value to the thing, you know. You know, without the AKR one, you, you, you know, you, you start buying uh, other other sort of uh, other sort of like uh, light modifiers. You're not going to get the same results that you're getting with this. So these are the accessories, as I say. Yeah, that's a reflector card. Yeah, flash card or reflector card. That's a dome, and you find that event photographers use this the most. Either this alone or that or in combination together. Uh, this is a grid. Very good for rim lighting at the back. Um, and that's a gel. Eh? You, can, you can change the gel colors. Just to show you some of the things we did. Today, eh, uh, this morning, eh, I just wanted to do a bit of like uh, fresh material for today's class. Eh? So basically, I went to a cafe. I took these lights out. Eh? Uh, basically, the V1, I've got a trigger, and uh, Wei En is one of, my, one of my photographer friends from Epo. Eh? So you look at X2T trigger, and then my, my, my uh, accessory kit with my V1. Eh? So if you look at this shot, eh? if I didn't have the flash, eh, this face would be completely black because it's backlighting. Eh? Complete backlighting. Eh? And this is direct flash. I just took the flash, TTL, just took a shot, I got this result. Eh? I looked at this, it's like, it's nice, but not, not perfect yet because this detail on the wall is quite nice. Eh? And because it's so bright, I've lost this detail because the flash, you know, just flashes everything. I lose all the detail on the side. Eh? So what, uh, what I, I decided, I, I sort of put on a, uh, I put on a grid, and I, I, I use the bundles. Eh? So I put on the grid and I put on the bundles. Eh? So basically what this does is it controls the light. I want the light to be a bit more focused on the face. Eh? So you look at that. No, this detail came back up, right? Because I'm not flashing the whole wall now. Eh? Yeah? And I, I just concentrate the, the light more on the face itself. Eh? And basically, I still get this nice like uh, graduation in shadow down the side of the face. I don't have light on the wall. Yeah? And basically, if you look at the, you look at the resulting photo, eh, you can do a lot more with it. Eh? Like all this is blown highlights. I cannot do anything much with it. Eh? But look at this. Eh? The detail on the wall. Eh? So that's the modifier I use for this. Eh? Now, this is another photo that was taken today. Yeah? Um, so again, uh, anybody can guess where the flash is? Hmm? Yeah, where? Anybody can guess where the, where, the, where the flash is? Left of the bottle? Focusing on the bottle. Anybody else? Behind the bottle, so someone holding it behind, behind that shooting, right? Yeah. Okay. So that's another shot, same thing. Yeah. So that's where the flash is. Yeah. I've got a grid. I just put the grid in so that I control the light. I don't want the light to fly everywhere. Yeah? So I put the grid in there. Eh? Light goes straight up, you know, I purposely put my, open my palm my hand so that I get a bit more light reflecting back to my face. Eh? And you get this wrong. Eh? And again, you know, you would think the exposure for this is complicated, but the thing is, same thing, you know. I just take the back exposure and then I turn on my flash, I turn it to TTL and then I just shoot. Eh? Yeah, and then from TTL, I just minus or plus the, the exposure compensation, I get the shot. Eh? Yeah. Okay. So So these are the pop quiz questions, huh? Okay. Someone help to uh to see who puts puts their hands up first, huh? Okay?
，来，给 ，ready， 给。First prize we're giving up is this uh, Gary's uh, strap. Eh? One, two, go. Anybody? AKR1. Oh. Oh. Let's take a photo, I'll make sure. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, what's your name, brother? Johnson. Thank you. Congrats. Okay, okay AKR1, huh? Okay. To be fair, if you want already, give other people a chance, okay? Okay, so that everybody will spread the joy around a bit. Okay, next question coming up, huh? And again, if you know the answer, put your hand up. One, two, three. Snoot, okay. Bundle. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. And what's your name, by the way? Uh, Yiming. Yiming, come. <coughs> so this is all courtesy of our YL camera, so you have to be thankful to them. It's a lens pen a sensor cleaner. So be careful when you use this, because you, you actually are closing your sensor. Yeah? Yeah? Thank you. And lastly, yeah, we've got this uh, Joby, yeah? Suction cup uh, gorilla pot. <laughs> Third question, huh? ready? DTL convert manual. DTL convert manual, okay. That's the first part of the answer. What does it do? Transfer the TTL to the manual by <coughs> Yeah. So how would you use it? Press the button. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Before you press the button. Before you press the button, you take a shot in TTL. Yeah, right? Press, yeah. And then after you take the shot, you Press the button, it converts it to manual setting. Okay, all right, welcome. And uh, Mr. Tang here, Tang Pui San, yeah. come. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So just to tell you, today they are having an exclusive offer on uh, on the Godox V1, eh? okay? So the... Uh, <laughs> if, you, if you're interested in it, uh, speak to uh, Marcus here, or any, any of the people. Huh? Or Daniel. Daniel, come here. Daniel. If you're interested in the, getting this today, you can check with Daniel. It's exclusive for today's event for all of you only. Yeah? Uh, you, you, you won't be able to get these prices anywhere else. Yeah? Yeah, it's uh, uh, for, for the six, uh, 690. 690. And then basically when you get this, you have to make sure you get it uh, that's compatible with your camera. That means it comes with a Nikon version, a Canon version, a Fuji version, a Sony version. Yeah? Okay, welcome to Do Dominica. Eh? Okay. I see we need to, yeah. Wow, you're really tall. Eh? Okay. Okay, tell you what. Um, so okay, um, we're going to take some live shots uh, with uh, Dominica. Yeah? And then uh, I, I just want to, firstly, I'm going to try the uh, A400 uh, lighting. Yeah? And then after that, uh, we're going to try with, uh, with the V1. And I'm going to try with the different diffusers so you can see the result. Eh? So, and hopefully, I don't take up too much time so that you have a chance to do the same. Yeah? So if you, um, uh, if you are using your cameras, uh, uh, you, basically, I think we're going to just test out mainly with the, with the, with the speed lights. Eh? <coughs> <laughs> so basic setting, no flash, yeah? Just using ambient light, nah? 
<laughs> so downside is we're shooting this at ISO 500, yeah? Uh, this is just using the natural lighting. So let me uh, put turn on the strobe. Huh? Okay, so group A on, it's on channel one, so that, that's working great. So next thing I do is, um, I want to shoot this at ISO 100 huh? because I know I want it to be, you know, really clean. Huh? So I saw down to 100. Maybe I'm shooting at uh, f, f4, just to begin with. And my speed, I, I usually shoot quite high because I, I'm not very stable eh, when, I, when I stand. Eh. So usually I, sh I shoot at quite a high speed. Eh. So most people who shoot at 100, I'll probably shoot at 200 or 160 for most events. And lastly, what I do is I make sure I set this to TTL. TTL is zero exposure compensation. Eh. Look here. So you look at this shot, eh? F4, look at the eyes. Eh? Look at the detail in the eyes. Yeah? It's, um, and we're using a uh, 90L softbox. Look, look, at the, look at the graduation on the light here. Right? So you can, get, you can get very dramatic effects here. Like only thing I might do is, because it looks a bit bright on the screen, I, I might bring it down TTL. It's actually not that bright on my uh, camera, you know. It's just that the, the screen actually makes it a bit brighter. But for the sake of showing this, I'm going to bring the TTL down by one third of a stop. Eh? So all I do is like, uh, I click A, bring it down one third of a stop, I take another shot. Yeah? And you can see on the screen, it's not so hot, eh? Yeah? So you look at that shot, eh? And that's it, you know? I've, I, all I did, you know, like the first time I'm using this strobe, eh? In front of you, eh? I, I've, I've set the lighting eh, in, in, in less than uh, five minutes. Eh? Only thing I did is set my, decide on what my ISO is going to be. I said ISO 100, I, I decide what my uh, aperture is going to be. And basically, you know, I set this to TTL and it, it got the right exposure. Yeah. What, one more shot over here. Okay. TTL, we've got... So basically, you look at how easy to use this light. Go ahead. Any questions about this, uh, these photos and the settings? And again, you know, when you shoot portraits, uh, you don't really have to shoot wide open, you know. You look at it, I'm shooting it, it's F4. At the back, it's completely blurred already. Yeah? So most, most, most of the tendency is like they want to shoot wide open, but that's not necessary. And the good thing about TTL is, uh, if you look at TTL, right, I'm at F4 now, I change to F5.6. Uh, This is the f5.6. I didn't change, I didn't have to set anything with the flash. Look at the exposure. Huh? Okay, now I go to f8. Huh? This is the f8. Huh? Look at the exposure. I went from f4 to 5.6 to f8. Look at the, look at the uh, exposure. It hasn't changed at all. Huh? Okay, the background obviously will change. Huh? Yeah, but the exposure and the subject hasn't changed. Eh? Now, if I go back F2.8, eh? F2.8. <laughs> Look. Eh? So, in terms of portraiture, usually, if you don't have enough light, you take a shot like that, it's okay. But, you know, you look at the, how soft the hair is. Eh? You know how soft the side of the face, you cannot get both eyes to be completely sharp. Eh? When we're taking commercial photography, we don't want shots like this, eh? you know? Because you want, you, want, you want the detail to be there. Eh? So if I stick this at F8 again, eh? in the studio, we always try to move the shoot at F8, uh, F5.6, F8. Eh? Look at that. Yeah. 
you know, the level of detail that you get is, is really a big difference. Yeah? If you're used to shooting at f2.8, wide open, you know, you look at the shot, it looks very pleasing. Yeah? But uh, when you start editing it, when you look at it technically, yeah, you know, like, there's no reason why the hair should not be sharp yeah? in the face, yeah? you know, in the detail, you know. And look at that. Yeah? Yes. Yes. You just set here. For example, okay, I want to set this to. Uh, you want to set this to TTL. I press A and then press mode. The mode changes are TTL to manual to off. And, and I'm 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 testing it here. Yeah. No. So you don't set anything in the V1, yeah? Okay? Okay, now I'm going to like switch to the V1 and we try and see how we can like take uh, photos with the different modifiers. Yeah? So maybe we can turn off the AD400. First thing is when you use a flash, most obvious is direct flash, okay? So let's, you won't get the prettiest photo, but you know, you'll get a, I'm shooting it as uh, F, um, F4, right? And then I'm moving my uh, ISO maybe higher because I'm, I'm shooting in the... I don't have the big strokes anymore. So I'm shooting at ISO 400 uh, direct flash. Huh? So direct flash, okay? Um, may maybe the only thing I'll do is I bring down the flash exposure compensation down a bit. Okay, so if you're shooting an event, you're shooting a politician that's very far away, this is acceptable. It's better than, you know, when we decide on light, if a person is standing like a, almost like the other end of the room, huh, there's no way you can bounce light there. Yeah, so the only way we can get light to them is to go direct. Huh? So we get a shot like that. You see news photos, they always use direct flash because it's more important to get the shot. It's not a beauty shot. Eh? So we should shoot like that direct. Eh? So if you look at that, is that okay? Um, it looks very hard. Eh? For, for portrait photographers, it looks very hard. But for if you're doing like a reportage, this is okay. Eh? Okay, so next level, I get a bit more sophisticated. I put this on. Eh? I use a diffuser cap. Eh? And diffusers are very good because firstly, the area is bigger, you get a bit of softer light. Yeah? Secondly, the light bounces all over the place, so you get a bit of soft light on the face. Yeah? But the downside is the light has no direction. Yeah? You don't get that like, uh, shadow across the face. Yeah? So let's look at that. No? Improvement, right? So, mainly when we shoot events, uh, you find uh, we use this. Uh. Which is okay, you know, if you're shooting an event. Uh. You know, you shoot different people across the room, you know. You see, you get very good. <laughs> and this one, I've been using TTL. Uh. Every time uh, I focus on a different subject, it's adjusting the flash power. Uh. So I don't adjust manual up, down, right, left, and all that, you know, like, basically it gets the exposure right. But again, let's look at the shooting, the, taking a shot of the model again. So this one, big improvement over direct flash, but only thing is, you know, like it's very flat, eh? yeah? Yeah. Our models, yeah, go ahead. Anywhere, bounce. You know what TTL stands for, anybody? Through the lens. Why is it called through the lens? Because it's taking the measurements through the lens. And how does it do that? When you do TTL, there's actually two flashes, a pre-flash and an actual flash. So the pre-flash we don't see. It's a very small power flash. It flashes out. And the light comes through the lens and it takes a measurement. Based on that measurement, it sets the power for the second flash, which is the actual flash. Yeah? So that's what you call through the lens. Yeah? It's taking your flash measurement through the lens. Now, um, 
Our model here has got very nice sharp features, but it's not showing up here because we, we got flat. You know, like you look under the under the neck, you know, you look behind the face, cheeks and all that. We are not sculpting her face at all. Eh? So what what's how do we improve this better? Before you use a grid, you bounce, okay? So bounce, there are a couple of ways you can bounce. Eh? Now I'm using a long lens. I'm using a long lens here. So basically, uh, um, we bounce according to where we want the light to come on the subject. Okay? For example, if, uh, if I'm standing really close, uh, yeah, and then bounce directly up, what's going to happen? The light's going to come straight down, uh, and you will get like shadows under the eyes, right? Right? See shadows under the eyes, uh, right? And a lot of people bounce that way because they say bounce light is good. Huh? If I were to take Pui Sang, if I'm setting a softbox, I'm going to set a softbox up there, right? So that it comes 45 degrees down. Huh? So likewise, when we bounce, I'll bounce back, right? I bounce around there. And hopefully the light will actually go into the eyes. Huh? So different people uh, would have to have different night. Pui has got very deep eye sockets, uh, so you have to go further back. Uh, yeah? huh? The Hanu also has got very deep eye sockets. Uh, so, you know, to get light into his eyes, uh, I have to make sure that I bounce back. Uh, right? I've, uh, I've looked it at the model. No. This one is an improvement over the dome, okay? Because we're not getting direct light onto the subject, yeah? It's all bounce, very soft light, yeah? but not very directional. Yeah? So, improve this. Um, usually, we bounce the light according to where the face is facing, right? So, she's pointing her face this way, I'll bounce this way, yeah? yeah? And depending on how much shadow I want, yeah? if I go back this way, then it's going to be very flat. If I go this way, then it's going to be slightly more like an angle. If I go this way, it's going to be very angled. But the, the one thing I do remember with lights, uh, they scatter, you know? When I, when I take this shot here, although a big part is bouncing here, some of it is spilling and going directly to the model's face. Let's look at that. See that? Yeah? So this is an improvement, but you know, we expected a bit more uh, drama with this. Huh? So this is where... So as yeah, I say, saying, you know, this part is not darkening, you know why. Because the light is spilling. <coughs> Although and most of it is bouncing back, a lot of light is spilling straight to the model's face. Huh? So one way to avoid that is, I put this here. Huh? And I put the black side in huh? so that... Uh, so this is called flagging yeah? So I'm avoiding the light from going straight to the model's face I'm still bouncing yeah? And I'm going to get you know, this, this basically what I've put in the, this thing But I put the black side on yeah? If I put the white side on What's going to happen is A lot of light will bounce to the back And it's going to affect my, uh, my, my, my I, Because I want to get very deep shadows across the side here so, let's try this, yeah? Okay. See that? The only difference is I put this here, you know? This is like avoiding the spill of light uh, from, from, from my flash directly onto the model's face. Uh. So I can try to go for a bit more... Go for a bit more drama here, but... Whenever I bounce, you have to see what you're bouncing against. You know? I look at this, it's a complicated bounce because I've got that you know, thing here. So it's, I'm, I'm not sure what, what kind of effect I'm going to get, but I'm going to try for it anyway. Yeah? See, it's a bit deeper now, right? And all I did is I turned this a bit more further forward. Right? Yeah? Okay, so how do I make this even more dramatic? Yeah? 
can where's my grid now? Sorry. Oh sorry. Can you use my grid? Yeah. So again, I use the grid, I control the light, make sure I got one spot of light here rather than let it spread all over the place. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, it does. Um, i give you an example. Uh, whenever we bounce, we always look at the ceiling. Uh, like relatively white, so that's good. Uh. You got a red wall at the back, you are in trouble. You try to take a, you try to take an Indian Hindu wedding in a Hindu temple, you get greens, you get blues, you get all sorts of different colors. Yeah. So, but the. Ah uh, yes. Like for example, this one, the black basically is not going to affect the color. It's just that I'm going to lose a lot of light. Yeah? But some places, you know, you go to a Malaccan house. Yeah? Sometimes you got a red wall. Yeah? You try bouncing that, the person's going to be completely red. Yeah. yeah? So what do you do in that? What do you do? Uh, one way is uh, you find someone with a white t-shirt like your son here. You come over here. Yeah. Yeah. So usually he's asking if I've got a place where it's really bad, uh, light. Uh, you know, then you turn your back to me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And a bit closer. Closer to, uh, closer to Dominica. Okay. okay. Uh, um, can you sit the other way? All right. Okay, and a bit uh, towards further, further. So this is a proof, uh, if I'm bouncing right, rightly off this, the back of his uh, shirt, uh, right? Okay, yeah. Right? So you get that effect, yeah? So usually if you've got very, like, uh, different colored surfaces, we always try to find on white to bounce, right? Sometimes against the wall, sometimes you know, you look at the uh, uh, YL there, the lichen there, all red, right? This part is a glass, right? Glass also is very bad to bounce. So uh, I try to find a white surface to bounce again. White, gray, black, you can bounce. Huh? Uh, other colors, you, are, you can bounce, but you be prepared to correct your white balance. Huh? So if it's very bad, huh? for example, if I'm shooting an Indian uh, Hindu wedding, huh? I shoot in raw. Because I, 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 most likely, I have to go and adjust the colors again. Because what's most important when you shoot, um, shoot uh, people, uh, skin tone. Uh, doesn't matter what other colors is, the skin tone has to be uh, faithful. Uh. Yeah? Yeah? Uh, any questions? Okay, so uh, once I conclude this, I'd like you to try a few things. Uh. Uh, try shooting with the diffuser, right? Try shooting with this flank, yeah? Try shooting with this flank, and try bouncing. Yeah? And uh, definitely, you know, try, if you have a Godox slash, try out the TTL. Yeah? It's, it's, very, it's very easy to use, to, to take some shots. Yeah? I'm not sure whether we should take here or we should go out. Yeah? What, what, what would you prefer? I think we would um, set I'll move this TV away, and maybe you can sit over here, and, uh, and then we would actually try and take some shots directly. Huh? Okay, thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. TV, move aside. What's the zoom function for? The zoom function, okay, good question. Huh? The zoom function uh, basically is a, it may, like if you wide zoom 24 mm, that means your light is going to be spreading like that. Huh? If it's 200 mm, then your light is going to be like this. Eh? So if you want to take portraits, usually we set the zoom to maximum 200. Eh? Because then I get a web, your softbox, you want your softbox to be very directional. Eh? You set it to uh, zoom at 200. Eh? So if you're going to bounce, usually you set the zoom to maximum 200. The moment I want to bounce, I set it to 200. Yeah? If I'm such, uh, taking a large group photo, maybe I set it to 24 eh, if, the, if the flash is like, going forward. Eh? Okay, all right. Thank you. Okay, so feel free.